Welcome to Dig Deeper, a Leaky Foundation videocast. My name is Beth Green, and today we're talking with Dr. Dean Falk. My name's Dean Falk, and I'm a professor at Florida State University, and I split my time with uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I'm a senior scholar at the School for Advanced Research, and I study paleoanthropology. So why is this type of research important? What can it tell us about ourselves and our evolution? Well, I'm interested in the evolution of the brain and intelligence out of curiosity uh, because I just think it's a fascinating question. How did people get to be the intelligent animal that they are? Who or perhaps what inspired you to get into this field of research? I became interested in anthropology, biological anthropology, when I was an undergraduate, fairly well along the way. I was a mathematics major, and I had to take a course to fulfill some requirement, and I ended up in an introduction to physical anthropology course taught by a zoologist named Charles Reed, and he was an inspiring teacher. And I knew uh, from that course that this was a subject matter I really wanted to learn about. Have you ever had a eureka moment? What was it like? I've experienced uh, eureka moments. One in particular uh, that was very surprising was shortly after graduate school, I went to South Africa to work on monkey endocasts, which are um, casts of the interior of the brain case that look something like brains and through great good fortune was able to look at hominin endocasts, endocasts of our ancestors. The literature at the time said that these uh, hominin endocasts would look like miniature versions of human brains, and they did not. They looked, to my eyes, ape-like, and that was a, uh, not just a eureka moment, but a startling moment. Tell me about a time you had a challenge or a setback in your research. I have had a challenge, an ongoing challenge in my research, which actually ties to the Eureka moment I just mentioned. Upon seeing that these endocasts of our uh, earliest then uh, ancestors, then known ancestors, upon seeing that they didn't look human-like, they looked ape-like, and I published my views and with very thorough um, descriptions, and this um, displeased somebody else in the field, and um, he took exception with my published view, and this was 30-some years ago, and we're still sort of uh, going round and round, so it's been frustrating and challenging to have uh, somebody who is uh, um, so opposed to my research, I mean, I really have, uh, we have a, a well-known uh, dispute that's known in the field, and there are challenges to, um, to do with making decisions about when one responds to these things and when doesn't, uh, one doesn't. And in my case, my friends say, oh, we're sick of hearing, you know, hearing about this uh, disagreement you have about brain evolution don't do it, just work, you know, do your own work, and, and that sounds like basically good advice, but every now and then I have to ask myself, you know, um, is it important to really sort of set the record straight from my point of view? So that's probably been the biggest challenge of my career. What is your favorite thing about being in the field? I guess my favorite memory of the favorite thing in uh, anthropology was being phoned up at the end of 2004 by somebody from National Geographic, uh, whom I almost, uh, who I almost hung up on, when the embargo lifted on Hobbit and it was just going out as news, and I didn't know about it. And he phoned me up and said, "Yeah, um, you, the Discover is inviting you to describe the Endicast," and that was. Um, was an amusing moment, then seeing it, watching it come up around the world and, and learning about this amazing species. I think maybe that was my favorite moment. Yeah. What do you think makes us human? Well, I studied the brain, 
and intelligence. So that's, it's not, you know, I don't have to think too long to say what makes us human. It's our evolved nervous systems and our intelligence. And I think um, a lot of other species are highly intelligent, but not like people. You know, we have language, no other animal does. But I think that if there's one thing that really makes us human, it's our curiosity. We ask questions, why? A chimp, you can teach a, you know, you can send a chimp to college and teach an American Sign Language. It's never going to ask you a question. If you could find the definitive answer to any human origins question, which one would it be? If I could, you know, uh, find an answer to something, uh, what I would do is I would um, find a time machine and I would get in that time machine and I would go back um, in Africa to two million, two and a half million years ago. And the question I would want answered is, is it anything like, are the hominids anything like we now think they, they were like? <laughs>